My thanks to Cardinal Whirl and the Gaffigans and all our honored guests for making this day such a happy occasion. Parents, grandparents, brothers and sisters and friends, thank you for raising our graduates. Class of 2016, congratulations. It's my privilege to offer you a parting word on a neglected virtue. Pope Francis has proclaimed this a jubilee year of mercy. It's not mercy I'm interested in. It's asking for it. Repentance, unlike mercy, is not a divine attribute. It's a virtue for sinners and stumblers. Maybe that's why we're so bad at it. One of our candidates for president this year put it this way last fall, I think apologizing is a great thing, but you have to be wrong. I'll leave you to guess who that was. St. Thomas says that the virtue of repentance has three effects, sorrow, confession, and satisfaction. It's the second that we have so much trouble with. We don't like to say we're sorry. We say, sorry, but. This is what the lawyers call confession and avoidance. Adam admitted that he ate the apple, but he said, it was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit, like it was Eve's fault, or, or God's. <laughs> we say, sorry if I offended you. This is the jujitsu apology. <laughs> it cleverly shifts the way to blame. It wasn't my failing, but your thin skin or wrong-headedness. The extreme form of this is what William Schneider calls the past exonerative tense takes the penitent entirely out of the picture. Mistakes were made, Ronald Reagan famously said about the arms for hostages deal with Iran. <clears throat> Most often we don't apologize at all. We wait for things to blow over. We're feeling contrite, but reluctant to go the whole hog. We make amends without an apology. Agamemnon did this in the Iliad after taking Briseis from Achilles. To appease Achilles' wrath, he offered to return her along with vast wealth. But as Maimonides once said, someone who injures a colleague or damages his property does not attain atonement, even though he pays him what he owes, unless he confesses. A good apology follows a simple formula. Name the offense, say you're sorry, ask forgiveness. In the wind and the willows, mole tips over rat's boat after ignoring rat's instruction. The miserable and wet mole then says, Ratty, my generous friend, I'm very sorry indeed for my foolish and ungrateful conduct. Indeed, I've been a complete ass and I know it. Will you overlook this once and forgive me and let things go on as before? The effect is remarkable. Rat replies at once, that's all right, bless you. And they go on, closer friends than before. Repent. It's a strange message for a commencement address. You'd expect to see it in Lafayette Park from that guy with the tin hat. The end is near. <laughs> but for graduates on the way out into the world, I think it's way more important than messages like remembering to wear sunscreen. I've been married for 40 years, and I have five children all now grown up and I have had a lot of opportunities to apologize. I have learned that repentance is the duct tape of family life. It can fix anything. The right words spoken at the right time, Pope Francis said, daily protect and nurture love. I promise you, your life will be happier if you cultivate the virtue of repentance. This sounds counterintuitive, we think of penitence wearing sackcloth and ashes, not being happy. But when you apologize, you open the door for mercy. And mercy brings peace. Those are the words of absolution. May God grant you his pardon and peace. So, my last word, make a practice of apologizing. Make confession a part of your routine. At the entrance to this basilica, there's a holy door open for this jubilee year. 
for people to do just that when they walk through to receive God's mercy. That's us. Before you leave today, make a short pilgrimage. It'll be a wonderful way to begin the next stage of your journey. God bless you all.